Good morning or evening or afternoon. Welcome to Rio Rancho United Methodist Church and the worship service on our YouTube channel. We are so glad that you are with us. Um, we wish we could all be together in person, but that still is not a possibility. For now, we just have to be patient, continue to be patient, and just remember each other in our thoughts and our prayers, reach out to each other through phone calls and cards, and just continue to look forward to when we will be able to be together. My name is Kim Peterson, and I'm the Youth and Education Director here at Rio Rancho United Methodist Church. For those of you that may be joining us for the first time, and if you are joining us for the first time or maybe just the second time, welcome. We're glad that you're here, and we hope that you are finding some comfort and some encouragement in the words that are brought to you each, each video. Uh, we have just a few announcements today, pretty much the same as normal. You guys know the routine. So if I was to say our first announcement is, all of you that watch all the time would say, yes, we will let you know if we need anything. And you know, you might just need someone to run to the store for you or grab a, a prescription. We have people that will do that. So if you are in need in any way, please let the church office know. Um, if you are in need of some financial assistance or maybe you need some, some food, um, we have access to some of that also. So please let us know if we can help you in any way. The upper rooms are now available and we would love to get one out to you if you would like to have a daily devotional for your use. Uh, you just need to let us know here at the church that you would like one. Give us a call or drop us a note and we will get one to you. Be sure and let us know your current address so that uh, we get it to the right place and you can get it in a timely manner. The Women's Book Club is going to go ahead and start reading The Shack. If you would like to join us, we would love to have you join us. If you need a copy of the book, please let the church office know or let me know, and I will make sure and get you a copy of the book. We continue to pray at 452 every afternoon. You know, that's what we can do best is to pray, to let God know our joys, our concerns, our, our blessings, our disappointments. We just need to let him know. And like I've said before, he knows, but he wants us to share it with him. So uh, join us at 452 every afternoon in prayer. And if you have a prayer request, let us know that also. Um, we would love to be able to pray for you. And we have a prayer team that will do that if you request it. We have one prayer quilt that still needs a few uh, knots tied. And so if you are willing to say a prayer for Paul Isaacson and then let the church office know, someone here at the office will tie the knot and then we can get that quilt to Paul. The Four Corners Native American Ministry is looking for um, activity ideas for their children. Uh, some of the children are living, you know, with, without running water, some without electricity. And so they're looking uh, for ways to keep some of the children active because they can't all be together. If you would like to bring uh, coloring books or storybooks, maybe you have some craft supplies that you think would be good, you can bring them here to the church and we will get them where they need to go so that the Native American ministry up in the Four Corners receives them for their children. And I just want to say that you guys did an awesome job with that this week. Uh, we have a very large carload going to the conference office this week for the, the Native American ministries, and we want to continue that through this month. Remember to remain faithful. I know it gets harder every week. You know, every week that we're not able to be together, it just seems to get harder to remain upbeat and to remain faithful in all that we do. But that is what God asks us to do, is to remain faithful. Um, you know, part of our beliefs is knowing that he's always there even if we don't see him. And going through the hard stuff is when we need him the most. And so just, just turn to God, 
say those prayers. If you can't join us at 452, that's okay. Any time is fine. But just remain faithful. Remain faithful in all things, the little things and the big things, um, with your tithes and your offerings and your prayers for everyone that is in need. And you will be blessed because that's how God works. Until we can be together and until next week when we film again, have a great week. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. And in these difficult times, you know it's hard for us to think of the blessings because there's so much that is discouraging right now. But we do thank you. We know as a nation, as a church, as families, as individuals, we are truly blessed, and we thank you for that. Lord, we want to lift everyone who is hurting right now to you. Just surround them with your love, protect them, and comfort them. Lord, we lift the first responders and all the workers that we deem essential. It's amazing, Lord, how many of us are essential and then how many of us feel like we're hmm, just kind of hanging out and not quite pulling our share. But we will when you need us. And so we pray that you will use us how you need to use us. Bless those that are working so hard. Keep them safe. Keep their families safe. Lord, we pray for our nation because it is hurting. And we just pray that you would have your hands in everything that is going on and just bring comfort to the world. And Lord, when we don't know what to pray, when we just are at our wit's end, we do know that there is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And so we can always turn to that prayer, and we know you will hear. So we say that prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Have you ever done the, the hallway dance? You know, you're going down the aisle, the, someone else is coming up the same way, and then you just kind of bump, and then you both step in the same directions, and then you kind of stop, and then wait for somebody to move back so that you can go on. 
or, or the person who always wants to give you a hug and they come running up and they just put their arms around you and you were getting ready to shake their hand and then all of a sudden you're in a bear hug. Those are embarrassing moments. The worst is when you get embarrassed for someone else. You feel their pain. We go out of our way so we don't embarrass ourselves. It's always so awkward. Do I acknowledge my mistake? Do I just pretend like it didn't happen? In doing research for this section, I, I watch an, an embarrassing amount of time on YouTube. How to recover from a fall. Some of the videos were so funny, I cried. Craig walked in and he doesn't share the same enthusiasm for this silliness. We avoid awkward situations. Try to avoid them. Talk, talk to a bride who has divorced parents coming to the wedding. No, no, the reception. How do you seat everyone so they feel welcome but don't cross paths? We don't like awkward. Even the spelling of the word is awkward. This phenomenon or, or personal mission statement is awkward avoidance. I don't like these situations because I, I feel weird. Unfortunately, as followers of Christ, this sometimes includes something that is awkward, and we feel awkward doing it. Know what it is? Sharing our faith. It's something we know we should be doing, but for the, the awkwardness keeps us from doing it. For the next three weeks through the month of July, we're going to jump right in and, and try and help us move us from feeling awkward to doing something we know we should do. Now, some of you watching may not be Christians because you have run into Christians who made it awkward for you years ago. Not all Christians are the same, and not all churches are the same. So we pray that by the end of this series, if you stick with us, you will know who Jesus is. Let's begin by talking of how we can be relevant in our culture. In order for us to be able to be relevant today, we need to be able to answer a very, very important question. Is Jesus still relevant? It's a an important question because our culture seems to propagate the idea Jesus isn't important anymore, so as a Christian, I'm not relevant either. Wrong. Wrong. Hear me when I say Jesus has been, is, and will always be relevant. I believe this with my whole heart. And, and not just because I get paid to believe this. No, I get paid because I do believe it. Furthermore, in the history of mankind, when you meet people who don't know Jesus, they are empty inside. There's a void, and, and people describe it as, as a hole they're trying to fill. And they try and use science or possessions or, or drugs or all kinds of stuff. And some of you may be feeling right now looking for something to fill that God-shaped hole in your life. It doesn't matter how much money we have, how much success we have, it doesn't matter how much power we have. Eventually, we could feel empty inside. Let me share the title of an article from Scientific American last year. Atheism is inconsistent with the scientific method, prize-winning physicist says. If you don't believe it, listen to people in their most vulnerable moments Listen for the emptiness. Tom Brady, in 2005, 
gave an interview on 60 Minutes. And I'll grant you that's a long time ago. But he said, there has to be more than this. This is a guy who has six Super Bowl rings, been voted most valuable player numerous times, and states there has to be more than this. The interview asked, what's the answer? Tom's answer, I wish I knew. This interview is one of the first links when you Google Tom Brady, and I admire his honesty. I wish I knew. We have the answer. Yeshua the Christ. He's the only person who fulfills. He said this about himself in John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It always has been and always will be about Jesus to find relevance. If you peel back the layers of the onion, people generally do not have a problem with Jesus. They don't. So what's the challenge? The challenge with Jesus being relevant today is primarily driven by who? Who is it? The challenge with Jesus being relevant today is primarily driven by Christians. Me, us. We are the primary challenge with Jesus being relevant today. It has been said that there are two reasons a person is not a Christian. Number one, they have never met a Christian. Number two, they have met a Christian. Let's begin by asking another question. I do have a couple of questions today. I'm hoping with this question, it will help you be more relevant or it will cause you to do things that are irrelevant or weird and awkward with other people. Here's the question. Is your role in sharing your faith to make sure someone is saved? Yes or no? Is, is that your primary answer when you do share your faith? The scripture for today gives us the definitive answer to that question. It not only answers the question, we get some insight into what our role should be in sharing our faith with another person. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let me set the scene, the context. Whenever you're reading the Bible, context is important. Read around the text or you might not understand what's being said. So here's the context. First Corinthians was written by Paul after Yeshua had died and risen again. Paul went on missionary trips and he went to different places to tell about Jesus. And he went all around the Mediterranean rim. He goes to this pagan culture, a city named Corinth, and he wrote this letter to the believers in Corinth, the Corinthians. Paul shared the story of Jesus with the Corinthians, but he left and went to other cities. After he left, another an amazing pastor came in and preached to the Corinthians, and his name was Apollos. Paul preached to them about Jesus. Apollos preached to them about Jesus, and an issue developed in the church. People wrote to Paul and asked what to do because some were saying, I am, I follow Apollos. Another would answer, I follow Paul. And Paul's the first man because he came first. Someone else said, no, Apollos is better. I know Paul was here, but Apollos is a better preacher, and I understand him better, so he's the one. Essentially, they were saying, my favorite pastor is Paul. No, Apollos is a better pastor. Aren't you glad that doesn't happen in our churches today? So what's Paul supposed to do? Here's his answer beginning in verse 4. For when one says, 
I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? Mere human beings. I, I think Paul is saying you're acting like infants, like babies. He goes on to explain, what, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. Each had a task. And guess who it was assigned by? The Lord. Okay, so what's our role, our task in sharing our faith? He explains in verse 6, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God is making it grow. Paul said, I planted the seeds. Apollos watered them. But don't ever get confused about who makes things grow, who saves people. It's always God. Furthermore, he says, neither the one who plants or the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. Now we have the answer to the question I asked earlier. Is your role in sharing your faith to make sure someone is saved? According to the scripture, what's the answer? No. Why? It's not our job and we can't do it. We, you can't save anyone. Jesus saves. I hope this makes some of us relax. When we share our faith, we think it's our job to bring that person to faith. Right now, right here. And you can't leave until it happens. And if it doesn't happen, we've failed. Paul reminds us we can't save anyone. So is anyone out there sitting back and thinking, oh, God, I can relax. Go for it, God. I'll just sit back here and watch. It's going to be awesome. No, we can't forget what Paul said in verse 5. The Lord has assigned to each his task. We have a task. We have a role. We can't save, but we have a very important role. In NASCAR, the tire changer doesn't win the race. But if the tire changer doesn't do his job well, his driver may not win the race. So what is our role? Plant and water seeds. Only God has the power to make it grow. Pretty amazing picture. I have a, a package of seeds here, and Paul is saying in people's lives around us, those who are not believers, it is our job, it's our job to open our lives and take the seeds in our lives and what God has done and is doing and plant them in other people's lives. Plant seeds all the time with people all around you. I know in a, in a world of social distancing, we may feel like this is, we don't have anybody, but we do, we do. And a little bit more about that as we go on. Our job is to plant seeds, and we have been planting, and then to water them all the time. After we have watered them, what can we do to make them grow? Nothing. Only God can make them grow. I will admit that I do talk to my plants. And I'll tell them, it's okay, it's okay. It's a new place, I know, but you're going to be just fine. It'll be okay. Or maybe I should take a, a more motivational speech attitude. 
Come on, big guy, you can do this. We can do this. Now, that's God's job. Only God has the power to make things grow. Done. If we take this concept of, of planting seeds, sharing how God has worked, is working in our lives, we can learn a couple of other ideas of how to be relevant. There's three principles we can learn from this idea of planting and watering seeds so we can be more effective. All seeds require different lengths of time to grow. One nice thing about seeds, if you look on the package, it tells you how long it will take for the seeds to germinate or sprout. Every seed is different. Chives sprout in just a few days, as do radishes. Lettuce is pretty fast, too. They are tiny seeds and able to absorb the water quickly, which is so important in germination. Every single seed has a different covering or, or coat around the seed. For the seed to grow, the water has to penetrate the seed coat for it to grow. Some seeds have a very porous coat, which water can get through easily, while others have a, a water-resistant thick coat, and it takes a lot of water and a long time to penetrate the coat. Guess what? People are exactly the same way. Some people have such soft hearts and are so receptive, and some have hard hearts. How, how many of you know a hard-hearted person? Are, are they sitting right next to you? Never mind. I'm just kidding. We need to understand seeds take different amounts of time and different amounts of water to grow. Knowing this, I hope you can see we will need to be more patient and persistent with some seeds we have planted and watered, the people in our lives. Point number two, the amount of water is critical. If you know anything about gardening, you know it takes exactly the right amount of water at the right time for a seed to grow. Seeds need to be moist, not soggy. And the watering has to be consistent. Some of our seeds might be not be doing well because we are not watering enough. On the other hand, on the other hand, we, we think that we need to save a person, we might resort to this. <clears throat> and you might think, I'm going to save you. I'm going to do this. Let's start right now. And if we get a person with a receptive heart, we may go a little bit overboard. Okay, we're going to read Genesis and talk about it tomorrow. On Tuesday, let's finish with the Pentateuch. On Wednesday, I want to introduce you to Psalms and Proverbs. I think you're going to learn a lot from them. It's just as easy to kill a seed by overwatering as it is underwatering. Or maybe it's the pressure. We need to know ourselves and how not to put undue pressure on somebody. I think one of the reasons we don't have, we don't feel comfortable talking about Jesus to others is because we have been in that position where somebody just keeps talking and talking and talking and forcing and forcing. And even when we stopped listening, they didn't stop talking. Sometimes 
Sometimes, even if you think a person needs a good spout of Jesus, we need to learn to find the back door to their heart because the front door has been so guarded. Hear what 1 Peter 3.15 says. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for your hope. But do this with gentleness and respect. We should never forget the gentleness and respect when we do share our faith, so neither of us feel awkward. Number three, consistent watering is required, usually by multiple people. You should be relieved to hear this. Not only is it not your job to save this person, hopefully you're not the only person watering. What if you invited someone to church and then someone else invited them? We are in this together and it's going to take a few of us to help this church grow. So the final question is, who in your life need some planting and watering. Just go ahead and write down a name. We're praying to be able to meet in August when the governor relaxes her group ruling. I believe we have a great place to share with our friends and neighbors. So let's work to invite them, help them feel valuable and welcome and share our faith with them. Let us pray. Creator, you have put many people in our lives. Even now, during this difficult time, there are people we can interact with. So open our eyes Help us to see who might have a God-shaped hole in their life that we might help them find you. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen.
go. And as you go this week, let your hearts be open. Let your eyes be open to see those who really do need Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.